Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for making time for us this afternoon. Welcome to SAGE 100, the fastest route from sale to payment processing. Today, joining us is SAGE Inventory Advisor, Russ Graff, who is Vice President of Sales North America. We also have Stanforth, Steve Showalter, Director of Sales. From Starship, we have Matt St. John and Caroline Rule, Sales Executive and Director of Sales. And from American Payment Solutions, myself, Patty Benitez, I'm Director of Partner Sales. So who exactly is Sage Inventory Advisor? Sage Inventory Advisor is a cloud-based application that enables companies to accurately forecast future demand of products and place optimal purchase orders in minutes. In the process, the best force provides incredible visibility into the health of your entire inventory. ScanForce is an industry-leading barcode scanning solution for Stage 100. For the best part of two decades, yes, I'm underlining two decades, they've been focused on helping Stage 100 clients manage their warehouse and business operations more effectively through the user, the use, I'm sorry, of barcodes and mobile devices. Starship, V Technologies is a Stage Gold development partner specializing in integrated shipping solutions since 1989. That's 17 years plus of extensive knowledge with the full spectrum of Sage products. This, in addition to established relationships with carriers and other related applications, inventory management, EDI, etc., which provides a mature solution that can grow with you. American Payment Solutions has connections to many different industries. We've become the endorsed mer merchant solution provider for many restaurants, hospitality, and software companies throughout the United States and Canada. American Payment Solutions is a full-service merchant provider. We serve thousands of small, medium, and large organizations. And today, we're very proud to announce our new click-to-pay functionality for Sage 100. So let's talk a little bit about our workflow process today and what exactly we will be presenting as a group. We'll start today by discussing how critical it is to have stock on hand to fulfill your sales orders. Russ Graff will share with us how Sage Inventory Advisor can help ensure that you have the stock you need without having warehouse overflowing with products and tying up cash unnecessarily. Steve from ScanForce will show ScanForce directed picking and packing with a DSD ScanForce multi-bin enabled. He's going to be highlighting how the mobile scan force programs allow the users to go paperless and follow a guided picking path to efficiently and accurately pick sales orders. He will also show how the users can then pack the items, indicating the Sage package details that lie into shipping data entry in Starship. Once we go into Starship, Matt will then show how to ship the packages that were defined on the handheld and will highlight features such as rate shopping, to find the best carrier and automating international documentation. American Payment Solutions will then show you how you can save an average of up to 43% on your current credit card processing fees without having to change your existing workflow process within your ERP. We will also walk you through the click to pay functionality. And just so you get an idea, click to pay is a simple and secure way for you to get invoices paid almost as fast as they are printed. So with that, I'd like to go ahead and begin our presentation. I'm gonna hand it over to you, Russ. All right, thank you, Patty. Let me share my screen. And you should now be seeing the Sage Inventory Advisor dashboard. So thank you, Patty, and thanks again to all those attending. Uh, I'd like to add uh, my thanks to you, you spending some time with us today. Uh, and hopefully you find this really valuable. We thought we would start this workflow with this concept of uh, inventory demand planning and replenishment because uh, we, we've got all kinds of great facility here and capabilities to, to take orders and ship orders and uh, credit card uh, process those orders and so forth, but none of that happens if you don't have the inventory on hand. So we thought it would make sense for us to start with that topic. And so what you're looking at here is a, a dashboard presented by the Sage Inventory Advisor product that really is designed to help you understand what the status or health of your inventory is at this moment in any given warehouse or any combination of warehouses. 
So make sure that you have the inventory on hand that you need to fulfill all those great orders that are coming in from all the marketing you're doing and sales efforts that you're performing, et cetera. Uh, we know we, we live in an Amazon driven world today. So customer expectations are very high. Uh, the competition is very strong. And so if a customer comes to you, whether it's in your uh, physical location or whether it's online uh, and you don't have the ability to deliver on an order that they place with you, you are at risk of not only losing that sale, but losing that customer overall. Uh, and so this is a very critical function. However, uh, the way that many small, medium sized businesses today solve that problem uh, or deal with the challenge of, of potentially running out is they simply overbuy. And there are some real challenges associated with that as well. Uh, first of all, you've got warehouse space that's expensive. Uh, it's tying up working capital that could be used elsewhere. There's risk of obsolescence and, and shrinkage or breakage of those items as you move them around. You have to count them. So you have to pay taxes on it. Uh, you have to insure that product that's sitting in your warehouse. So there are some very real hard carrying costs associated with having too much inventory. So this is an age old problem for any inventory based company, whether you're a distributor, manufacturer, retailer, retailer. We all know that it's always been a challenge to have uh, kind of just enough inventory to meet the demand of your customers, but not too much, right? If it was up to the sales staff in the company, uh, they could care less about having too much inventory. They just don't ever want to lose a sale. They want to have product uh, sitting everywhere at their fingertips ready to go. But if you're on the accounting or the CFO side or, or management level side of the business, you know, again, that that's costing you a lot of money. And so there's that balancing act that the individuals in the organization that are doing the buying or the planning of the inventory have to deal with those two competing interests at all times. And it's an age old problem. And what we have found is that many businesses, especially again in the small, medium sized market that we target with this application, you'll find that uh, there are just inadequate tools being used. Oftentimes it's Excel or, or a spreadsheet environment where you're trying to extract data, upload it into a spreadsheet, create formulas to do some uh, math for you to tell you what your demand should be, looking at historical patterns and so forth. Really challenging to do that. Certainly there are some Excel wizards out there in the world and in many of our organizations, and it would appear that that's a free product, right? It's on everybody's desktop. But the reality is there are a lot of hidden costs with that. You're never going to get to a uh, best practices sort of model to really help you understand what your demand profiles are and what your purchasing uh, patterns need to be. So what we've done here with the development of the Sage Inventory Advisor application is done all the hard work, all the heavy lifting, if you will, and done the extraction of the data. We integrate with the Sage 100 application seamlessly. We've got hundreds and hundreds of users around the country and for that matter, around the globe in various Sage ERP products, uh, over 1,200 total around the, around the globe today uh, that are using this application every day to help them extract that data from the back end of the database, put it up into this cloud environment so it's accessible via any browser, any device, anytime, anywhere on demand. And we'll typically refresh this data once a night during the, during the night hours so that when a buyer or planner starts their day in the next morning, they're presented with this dashboard that absolutely completely accurately represents where they stand today uh, and with their inventory in a given warehouse. And not only that, but what we do then with the dashboard, as you can see here, is we really follow a sort of a management by exception sort of approach. You might have thousands of SKUs in your inventory, uh, and perhaps a couple hundred of them are causing you some heartburn. So let's identify where we've got things going wrong in the inventory, bring my attention to those, and not only that, help me prioritize within those which ones I should take action on first so that I can have the largest impact on my profitability in my organization. So I can see where I'm at, what I need to do to take action. Are there orders already placed? Do I need to place some orders? Do I need to expedite orders that are already out there? What do I need to do to make sure that I don't have that uh, stock out condition, but that I also don't have, again, warehouses overflowing with product tying up uh, working capital. So what we've done here is a very visual, uh, color coded graphical sort of interface and a dashboard that highlights where we stand. You can see six different key uh, widgets or panels on the dashboard that help me look at certain KPIs or key indicators so I can see exactly where my current stock holding is and how I'm doing with my fill rate to my customers. I can see that I've got a little too much inventory. I've got uh, $4 million more than I really need to have, uh, but yet I'm still not achieving the target fill rate that I have for myself. So I've got some work to do. 
but at the same time, I can quickly see that the trending is going the right direction. I can see that my fill rate is going up. My excess stock is climbing, is, is trending down. Uh, my potential, my stock outs and potential stock outs tends to be trending down. So I'm making progress, but I've got more work to do. So some very quick visual cues as to how I'm doing. Then I have the ability in each one of these panels to look at more details. So I've got, here's my excess stock over time. This is over the last 12 weeks. So I can see some trends there. I have the ability to drill into the detailed information on a given uh, report. So if I want to see all 2,000 items that I have too much of, I can do that in a report. And it's sorted automatically by value. So my top uh, five listed showing on the dashboard will match what's here. But I can also filter this information very nicely with a variety of different fields of information. So if I want to just look at who are my low moving items, my slower velocity items, I can apply that filter and now just see those items that I need to deal with and maybe print a report out, send it to my suppliers uh, and say, hey, maybe you can take some of this product back from me. Maybe you have other customers that need it. Maybe internally I can route that and see if there's other warehouses that could benefit from some of my excess and transfer that inventory. So now at least I have my fingers on uh, the pulse of what's going on in the organization. So I've got the trending, I've got a full report, and I've got a list of my top five offenders, if you will, that are contributing the most to this particular condition. So for example, if I look at where I'm currently stocked out, I've got some 900 items that I'm stocked out on, and we project that could cost you close to $760,000 worth of sales if my customers go elsewhere because there's demand on those products that I can't fulfill right now. And I can see individually underneath there some very uh, critical items. There's, you see this additional color coding. So I've got red and blue and gold and green. What that is is a reference to my uh, stock classification or product classification that I'm doing where I'm doing an ABC analysis for every item in every warehouse, ranking my items by value, typical ABC environment that you're probably already familiar with. But in addition to that, Inventory Advisor will also do a ranking of high, medium, low velocity of movement. So how fast are those products moving? And then interestingly, I'll combine those into a nine box color coded matrix here that really gives me the nature, the understanding of the nature of the items in my inventory. So I can now see in the upper right corner here, these items that are coded green are my high value, faster moving items. These are my bread and butter guys that I don't ever want to run out of. I should have higher target fill rates for those. I can set policies and metrics around those items as opposed to this, uh, these folks down here in the lower left, some 1700 items that are slow moving, low cost items. I can now make some other decisions. Maybe I shouldn't even bother stocking some of those if I have a vendor that can manage that inventory for me. Or if these are just simply some nuts and bolts that I don't want to run out of, could cut shut, I don't want to shut down a production process because of a lack of a, a nut or a bolt. But maybe I just buy them twice a year. If they don't take up much space, they don't cost me much. Just buy them in bulk a couple times a year and not worry about them all the time. So the advantage of that color coding again now is when I look at my dashboard, I can see very quickly as I look at my top five list, my list of top offenders for each of these KPIs, I can now see how important they are to me. So here's an example of an item that is an AH color-coded green item. So this is a key bread and butter item. I'm out of stock on it right now and it's costing me potentially $62,000 worth of lost sales. So now as a planner, I wanna take a closer look at that so I can drill right into the detail of that item from my dashboard and quickly see some other statistical information. Static data coming from the item master file typically, right? How is it priced and costed? Uh, volume and weight if I'm tracking that, how we classify it, our primary supplier, maybe some other user-defined fields and uh, data around that. But importantly over on the right, here's my demand profile. So I can see exactly what the last 27 months were in terms of consumption of that item, sales or use in a, in a pro uh, manufacturing process. Uh, and, and so I see that graphically and then a table pops up that shows me the last 12 months in terms of units. And then in the gold is my projected forecast for the next 12 months. And we do that at Inventory Advisor as a result of 15 different algorithms that are built into the Inventory Advisor application. So my computer forecasting method or the algorithm that was used to make this projection of demand is called no trend with seasonality. So it's not seeing any obvious up or down trending over time, but it's clearly finding some seasonal patterns. So that's the algorithm that it will use to predict future demand for this item. 
Not only that, we're going to look at what's a proper safety stock or buffer stock for a given item. So based on fill rate and replenishment cycle, how often I buy this, and looking at my lead times, uh, it's going to calculate a safety stock, but it's also going to apply some risk factors to that. How well does my supplier perform? Does he ship on time? Does he fully ship or under ship? Uh, how well is that forecast behaving? Is it predictable or is it very volatile? The more risk associated with these two elements, then more safety stock is warranted. Uh, and even if it's a little bit of excess, it it's, it's makes sense for me to do that. It's intelligently designed to say, here's where you should have, have some buffer, some safety stock, so that you don't run out, but you still don't have more than you need. That safety stock then flows into this middle panel, where I'm looking in terms of time and units of measure, whether that be cases or eaches or whatever. What my lead time is plus my safety stock gives me my reorder point, or in other words, my minimum, plus my replenishment cycle, gives me my maximum or my order up to. So every night for every item in every location, inventory advisors calculating a safety stock and a min and a max, and then comparing that to where I currently stand on hand, and then making recommendations on what I need to order. So again, this is uh, stocked out. So clearly there's a recommended order here for 68 days worth of product, and I need to get that going. And in fact, maybe there are already some orders out there, and if I slide a little bit further down, Again, my source of truth is Sage 100, the Sage ERP application, shows me that I've got four existing purchase orders already out there, that I'm just waiting for them to arrive. So now I can take some action. Is there something I can do to expedite this? Should I be placing an additional order to get it into the flow so that it arrives perhaps sometime in December uh, for me? Uh, so now I've got all that information at my fingertips and as a buyer or planner, I can take the appropriate action and, and move forward. I have the ability to adjust the forecast that is provided by the algorithm in, in Sage Inventory Advisor. So I may know something that the system didn't. We just signed a big contract with Costco or we just lost a big customer like Walmart. Whatever the case may be, I may be getting feedback from my sales team as to what's going on in the marketplace and what's trending out there. I have the ability to quickly amend the computer generated forecast, add my own tribal knowledge and experience to that and apply any of those changes and now as I apply those changes and make that my final forecast, that could be impacting my purchase decision. And speaking of purchases, I've got one other thing to show you before I hand it off to Steve uh, at ScanForce. Uh, we have the ability to really expedite the ability for your buyers and planners to, pr to produce an, an optimal purchase order, one that really understands all of this analysis and makes it easy for me to quickly create an order. So what, I am, what I've done here is I've gone to the order screen Inventory Advisor is going to show me every supplier that has at least one item that needs to be purchased today to either keep myself in balance or to get myself back into balance. And so I can see the snapshot, kind of a summary view of every one of those. Let's say I'm going ahead and create a purchase order for this particular vendor. I click on Create Order, and now it's going to expose all of those line items, in this case 14 of them, that it's recommending that I buy from this supplier today. And all the information, again, is at my fingertips to show me why the recommendation here in the case of this first line item 330, why is that my recommendation? And it's more than my minimum order quantity. I see that I understand things like multiples if I have to buy in terms of dozens or cases or 100 units at a time or whatever. I can see how it's classified, how we currently position this. It's on a potential stock out status. Here's the shorthand of of that panel that we looked at earlier with my lead time and supply uh, safety stock and so forth, I can see what's on hand in other locations. So instead of making a purchase, perhaps I've got more than I need somewhere else and I can transfer it. So again, all the data at my fingertips, my demand profile, I can make changes to this if I want to. So if I again know something that the system didn't and I want to get 500 of those, now it makes that change. It shows it to me in my summary table here in the lower right hand corner. And when I'm ready, I've made whatever changes, I've topped up containers, all the things that I can do to use the intelligence built into Inventory Advisor. And when I'm done, I click download, and that goes and creates an output file that we now use Visual Integrator and Sage 100 to go create the uh, new open purchase order and follow our standard rules. So the way we designed this was really to answer two key questions, and that is, what do I need to take care of? What needs my attention today? right, by showing me a dashboard with all kinds of visual cues and drill down and drill around ability to know where I need to take action and solve those problems. The next day I get a fresh dashboard with a fresh top five list. The next day I do it again. And even if I've got limited time in my day, 
which is many times the case in a small, medium-sized business. Maybe you're wearing two or three different hats in the organization and buying is just one of them. So I don't have all day to spend analyzing all these items every single day. Show me where I can have the most impact, make those adjustments, make changes, place orders, expedite orders, whatever it is. And then the next day, get a fresh dashboard that again guides my priorities for that day. So the net result is I answer that first question, what needs my attention? And the second question is, what do I need to order? And as a result of that activity, being smarter about my purchasing decisions, I now have the ability to really understand uh, what needs to be purchased, what do I have on hand, and now I can fill all those great orders that are coming in from your sales teams. And once we've got that, that order ready to process, that's really when it comes over to the picking and packing process. So Steve, I'm gonna send it over to you. Okay, so as Russ mentioned, we have our accurate information there as far as what needs ordered. The orders are now coming into your system. And with all the information you're able to get from Sage Inventory Advisor, one of the questions that most people ask themselves is, how do I know that that data in my Sage system is accurate for that to report off of? And that's where a solution like ScanForce comes into play. There are several parts of the uh, equation that really ScanForce comes into play with, you know, from receiving, making sure items are received properly and accurately and quickly, getting that data into your system uh, as quickly as possible. Also, automating manufacturing. So when you make those items, you can get those into inventory so you can see those quantity levels as Russ was talking about. Counting inventory, um, labeling products, and even we have a mobile sales solution. You can create these orders very quickly out in the field at trade shows that even ties into Patty's solution for processing credit cards remotely. For the purpose of this webinar though, we're gonna focus on the aspect of ScanForce that allows you to efficiently and quickly uh, and accurately pick these orders that are in your system. So what we're looking at here is an emulation of a scanner. I actually have one on my desktop here and it's being mirrored on my computer for you all to see. So at this point, this is the beginning screen of ScanForce. This is where you log in. And by logging in, we control permissions, who's allowed to do what within our software, and also a component of our dashboard allows us to show you who's done what for reporting based on what ScanForce has done. I'm gonna go ahead and simply log in by hitting accept here, and this is the main menu. As you'll notice, the ScanForce screens are very clean and easy to navigate. The last thing you want out in the warehouse is somebody looking at a screen and wondering, what am I supposed to do next? So it's very easy to navigate through. We're gonna pick this sales order, so I'm gonna go into order processing, and that's where we're gonna see our receiving programs, but also our picking programs. Now within ScanForce, there are quite a few options. If I were to take the time to go through every option with you guys, I would take an hour myself, and you all would probably be bored two tiers. So I'm gonna to try to keep it pretty simple, but keep in mind there are a lot of features and functions that I may not be uh, mentioning today that may fit into what you're trying to do. So if you are interested in this and see some things that are, feel some things might be missing, we can definitely break off for a one-on-one -on -one demonstration at some point. Now, to pick this order, you'll see I have SO picking, then I also have checking and packing, and you'll see sales order shipping. So within ScanForce, we give you some options. One thing that I'm sure all of you are aware of is Sage looks at an order, and then it's an invoice. But there's a lot of times that in between of I've staged an order, it's not ready to go out yet, and I don't want to create that invoice date or number yet. That's where our picking program comes into play. So you can do this in two stages, pick, then check and pack, or ScanForce does allow you to do it in one step. If you get that order that's in a rush needs to get out, you don't have to go through the two-step process. You can simply take it and get it out the door. Today, I'm gonna to do the pick, pack, and ship, and I'm gonna launch SO Picking simply by tapping on the screen, and it's gonna ask me for my order number. So this is where you have some options. Some people still barcode the order number on a sheet of paper. Others wanna key it in, or you can do this lookup by tapping the magnifying glass. This is gonna connect up real time to my Sage system and show me all of the orders that are available for me to pick. I can either search in that field up top by customer name or sales order number. I also can scroll with my finger and find my order that way. So I'm gonna to go towards the bottom for an order I'd already created here. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and select that order by just tapping on the screen and then hitting accept. Now, ScanForce also does have some features that we refer to as wave picking where you can actually group several orders together and pick them all at once. So I selected just one single order to pick and with that multi-bin install, as Patty mentioned in the beginning, it's gonna ask me for a pick two location. So we're dealing with multiple locations in an actual warehouse. A lot of customers of ours set this up as a shipping bin or maybe a staging bin. You even can uh, set this up specific to a customer. You could have a Walmart bin, for example, or an Amazon bin for your Amazon orders. You can simply key that in, or if you have that barcode, just shoot the barcode, 
I have shipping as my bin location. Once I indicate the bin, it now takes me over to asking me for the items. On the screen, you'll see here, it's displaying for me, I need to go get item D1000, and it's in bin location A30M, and it tells me the quantity here. This is the directed picking, and it also sorts by bin location based on what bins are actually indicated for that order. That's a whole separate topic that we could get into details on, but the, the long and the short there is, or the short of the long is, you can do bin allocations back in your Sage system with automatic uh, bin allocation set that follows a list or a set of rules, if you will, back in your Sage system that determines what bin it's going to actually look to to pull that item from. The bottom line of that is, though, is that by having that done already, the scanner now can take me the most efficient way through my warehouse, telling me to go to that bin first, grab that item. Some options within ScanForce are to force the user at this point to actually scan the item itself. That gives you the most accuracy as far as making sure they're grabbing the correct items. However, some of our customers have items that may be either far away and they don't want to spend money on long range scanning or the person's in a forklift. So what we do is give you the option to simply tap on the screen here to select the item. It'll next prompt me for my bin, which then I can go ahead and select that by tapping on the screen as well. Once you select that item and that bin, it's going to show me 10 are allocated from this bin and I get a quantity summary here. Our screens default to the quantity field and the numeric keypad automatically pops up. So I'll go ahead and indicate my 10 for that item. And now you'll see that drops off of that screen. So I know I'm done with that item, go on to my next item. I can again scan the barcode or I could choose from that screen right there. After I indicate my item, I can go ahead and scan my bin, indicate my quantity, and now I'm done. So if this was a large order I could have picked over time, and then the person that comes up behind me to finish picking an order that I may have started will only see the items that are left to be picked. You also can do things like splitting an order if you have a large order. You know, one person can go pick one half, the next person can pick the other half, and there are rules that ScanForce has set up as far as how that split as well. Now, to push this back over to Sage, I simply send my data over, it connects up, and, oops, I don't have a link turned on here. And that's gonna import back over. Upon import back for the picking program here, it's gonna do two things for us. And one of these ties directly into the install or enabling of the multi-bin solution. So when I go back in to my Sage system here, I'm gonna pull up that order that we just picked. And when I go to lines, you'll see here, here's the, one, the two items that were on this order here. We go ahead and populate this developer field here, quantity picked. And this relates back to a non-multi-bin install as well. So there's data showing what's already been picked here. When I pull up the bin distribution field here, you'll see that now it says that it's allocated to shipping. Prior to this, it was uh, populated with A50U for this item here, and for D1000 it was A30M. Those were the two bins. So once we've picked it now, it's no longer in that bin, it's been staged, so the allocation needs to change as well. So we do that instantly for you. And the second thing we do is, we actually do an instant bin transfer for you. So whenever you're looking at your data back in Sage, it's real time. And now once I pull this up in multi-bin here, And you do that simply by just double clicking on a warehouse code that drills into it, and you'll see the 15 for this item that we picked were instantly moved over. Now they're in that shipping bin. And this gives us a quick chance to just get a quick look at what multi-bin means, for those of you that aren't familiar with it. These are the detailed locations out in a particular warehouse. With standard Sage install, you're simply gonna see your items in your warehouse codes and your quantities broken down by transactions. But without multi-bin, you don't have that detailed visibility of where they're actually at. So once an order has been picked or staged, now we need to go ahead and pack or ship and get that out the door. So the second phase of this, back out of picking here, is going to be the checking and packing. Some of our customers even load this on a PC out of an actual shipping station and then have a keyboard wedge reader, for example, tied to that. You also could do this on the devices here. Now, there's a couple of options also that I'll mention very quickly. We have a pick to pallet feature, where if during that picking phase I wanted to utilize that, it would indicate every time I was done with a pallet by printing out a barcode that I would slap on that pallet so that when I went to go do the checking and packing, I could simply go scan that pallet ID tag and that will tell me that that's a valid pick or a valid pack for that order. Or you can do what I'm gonna do here and go item by item for kind of a, a more detailed double check. You launch the program, it's gonna once again ask me for my order number. Now I'm actually gonna just key this in as opposed to doing the lookup, but you could once again scan it or do the lookup. It's gonna connect up, grab the data from my Sage system, placing it on my device here. And it's gonna know that it was picked to my shipping bin. So that's gonna default for me and hit accept. And it does do that directed picking, if you will, uh, but it's not necessarily telling you to go anywhere since everything's all grouped together. It's just simply listing out the items for you. Now at the top, you'll notice 
notice that we default to package one. This is how we're gonna indicate which items are grouped together by packages so that back in Sage, when Starship launches, you have your items already grouped together. So we start with package one, and once again, you can limit this so that someone has to scan the actual items, or you can do what I'm about to, which is tap on the screen. So I'm gonna start with this item 6655. So I select my item. It shows me how much I have here to pack up. I have 15, but let's say on package one, which also could be a pallet itself. Um, so let's say I can only fit 10 of this item on there. So I'll indicate my 10. To change packages there or pallets, I simply hit the plus uh, button next to the number. So I'll tap that, it goes to package two. We'll pack the remaining five for this item. Once again, it drops off of my display, so I don't see that I have to pick that anymore. And let's say I still have some room on this pallet or package. So I select my next item. Out of the 10, I go ahead and select five. Now I'm gonna go to package three, where I'm gonna complete my packing. At this point, I'm done, so I send my data back. It's gonna connect up to my Sage system, and now this is actually going to create the shipping data entry transaction back in my Sage system, and this is where now you would go ahead and pull up Starship. So I'm gonna go ahead and kick this over to Matt so he can show you how you finish uh, shipping this particular order. Hopefully everyone can see my screen with Starship in the dead center of the screen. All right, so Steve just mentioned and showed you right from the handheld scanner, you can you know pick and pack your items in the correct packages. And once you're ready to ship, uh, Starship can receive that information, how it was defined on your handheld scanner. Um, so here is Starship in the upper left-hand side, I have my source document. Um, and just like uh, Scadforce, I can, you know, if my pick sheet's barcoded, I could actually just use a regular wedge type scanner that's hooked up to my shipping station and scan that barcode. Um, I could mainly use our lookup feature to see all the orders. Starship does support batch processing or I can, of course, manually just type in my order number. So I'm gonna put in that sales order number that we just picked and packed from the handheld scanner. And Starship is going to return all the data from Sage and from the scanner. All right. So the way Starship works, we really map fields from Sage, kind of back and forth. So these map fields can have a one-to-many relationship. So as you can see here, just based off that order and the ship via, Starship's automatically populated my carrier, my service, billing, account information. Okay. And now this information, because it's automatically populated, doesn't mean I can't go in and make changes. You know, I can change service, billing, so on and so forth. Okay. A sender, that's the company that the order is coming from inside of Sage. Starship does support multiple companies, as well as warehouses and or locations. And then the recipient, um, basically that's the ship to from the sales order. Starship will also do address validation. We do validate zip plus four. Uh, so we're gonna help save on those address correction fees that you might get hit with from the carriers. And we are also actually gonna also validate the commercial residential flag, okay? So probably some of you getting hit with those fees as well. Um, one of the nice things Starship's gonna help eliminate. Right. Now down in our packaging view, as I mentioned, however, I define my shipment with ScanForce on that handheld scanner. That's how Starship's gonna return into this packaging view. So you can see my three boxes with my split items. On this custom box, I'm gonna click this. One nice feature of Starship is that we have our own database where you can store custom packages. So if you're using you know, kind of standard boxes, uh, your shipper can actually go in and select the box Along with that, we will, and you can set up the dimensions for the box, so that information gets automatically populated. All right. uh, with Starship, when we do rate shopping, we do return list rates, contract rates, but as well, we do the dim weight. So as you can see here, I have bill weight five, but seven pounds is actually the dimensional weight of this box. We integrate with most scales, so if you have a scale hooked up to your shipping station, uh, Starship can automatically pull the weight from the scale, or you can click the get weight button. My system, I'm actually just using the weights that are inside of Sage. Uh, click on this box here. I'm gonna just bring up a line item detail. So on the line item detail, again, this is information being pulled in from Sage, uh, but Starship will also start automatically storing your line item detail information. A nice thing with that is we have information that you know usually doesn't live inside of Sage. 
uh, like NMFC codes, freight class. Uh, this order actually happens to be international. So with Starship's database, we can actually store the required international data. As you can see, country and manufacturer. The schedule bead or harmonized code, we actually provide a lookup. So I can look up by code, by description. And again, any EEI classification, if I need a certificate of origin, um, all that information is going to be stored right with inside of Starship here. Okay. Uh, if I try to sit, ship something, maybe one of these items didn't have a Schedule B code, it, Starship would alert my shipper. They can simply go add that information. And then you know, once they ship and process, that information will be there for next time. Next steps, you need to rate shop at time of shipment. So I can click this green dollar icon, or I can go to the rate shop tab. Uh, standard feature with Starship, we also actually add a rate quote button inside of sales order entry. So customer service reps or whoever your order takers may be can actually rate shop right at time of order. If I jump back into Starship here. Uh, by clicking the green dollar icon, that's just automatically going to take me to the rate shop tab. And as I mentioned, what Starship is doing, we actually use your carrier credentials. Right? So when we make the call, we are going to call, in this case, we're going to UPS. If I had a FedEx module or even LTL carriers we support, I would be able to see all the different carriers and rates from all the carriers that I have modules with. And again, using your live contract information, we are going to return your contract rates that you have with the carrier. As you can see here, I can also change this. I can see list rates. Shipper is going to be able to see estimated delivery. We can change that to by business days, totals days. With Starship, you can also do what we call ship via rules. So if I wanted Starship to automatically kind of go through the rating and select carrier and or service based off my own criteria, most certainly can do that. You know, hey, maybe select the carrier service that's the least expensive. Or my shipper can most certainly manually make the change here. Okay. As you can see, maybe this one here, because it's only $98, we can change that. Charges tab, this is actually just a breakdown of charges. Your shipper doesn't have to click on this to actually ship this order. I just show it so I, we can discuss and I can show you freight rules. So with Starship, most certainly we can set up freight rules. Uh, freight rules can be percentages. They can be min maxes. It could be a flat rate. It could be plus or minus on top of, uh, say, list rates or even publish rates or your contract rates. Um, we can look for the criteria or triggers. You know, we can look at Sage fields. Uh, Starship can also look at user-defined fields if you have them set up in Sage. So here I actually have one. Uh, it's a freight called freight discount. It's just a checkbox. This lives in customer maintenance. Uh, so because that checkbox is selected for this customer, they are receiving a 10% discount on freight. Okay. You know, these, these triggers that can go all the way down to line item detail, uh, promo codes. Uh, but with line, line item de detail, hey, anytime order or item one, two, three is on an order, maybe automatically add $20 because it's an oversized item. When my shipper is ready to ship, they can click the ship and process button or they can click the F5 key, which is a shortcut key. But as soon as we click ship and process, our shipper is going to get their shipping documents. Uh, for the sake of the demo, they will preview, uh, but most certainly we can set them up to just automatically print out. Um, also for the demo, I'm using our smart label. And as you can see, our smart label prints the shipping label and the packaging list together. Uh, this would go to an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So this would need to go to a laser printer. Uh, but we do give you the option. You can actually still send your shipping labels to a thermal printer. If you wanted to, you can actually also send the packaging list to a thermal printer as well. So maybe you want to save some paper, use those uh, free labels you get from your carrier, you can do that. Or you could do mix and match, you know, shipping label goes to the thermal printer and then send my packaging list to a laser printer. Right, so we have box one, package two. Uh, because this is an international document, Starship will, box three, will also print the international documents if needed. Uh, so here's a commercial invoice. And because we are pulling order header, line item detail, and we store required information, all that data is going to print on the documents. Documents can be customized. You can create un templates for each document. On each template, assign printing rules. So say customer ABC needs this commercial invoice to look a little different. You can create a template for them, create a rule, and then that document would only print 
when the order is for customer ABC. So as you see, ICE has a sign dated. Just ways you can actually help save time. You know, one less thing my shipper has to go in and sign a document. So here's our NAFTA form. Again, sign, name, date, all that information I already populated for my shipper. And finally, I uh, get our shipper's letter of instructions. So with these documents, you, of course, you don't have to print them all. You know, uh, you can also send them to like a PDF and store them on, on a network drive if you need. But again, my shipper is going through ship and process. They're going to get their shipping documents. And for them, it's now kind of rinse repeat cycle. They're ready to move on to their next order. Uh, back inside of Sage for the front office, I'll go into invoice data entry here. So we can take a look at, at the data that's been passed from Starship onto the invoice. Let me grab my last invoice here. So as you can see, sales order 303, that's the one we just shipped, on our header tab, on this tracking button. And bring up all my tracking information. All right, so this is being passed right into Sage's tracking table. So this, you know, once someone goes and updates and prints these invoices, this information can be accessed through uh, customer maintenance or invoice history lookup. Because it's in those tables, I can also use Sage has a button here to track. I can also use their item to box detail button. So I can actually see what was in each, box, uh, each package. On the totals tab, we are also gonna pass back the freight amount. Uh, freight amount is plus or minus any freight rules. We can also set up write back rules. So if there are some scenarios where you do not want freight to be written back, you can most certainly do a rule for that. Um, underneath this freight cost from Starship, this is actually a user defined field. Uh, just kind of showing you how Starship can also take additional data and pass it from Starship into custom fields if you have them set up inside of Sage. So this one, I'm actually always going to be passing what the carrier is going to charge me. So this is my contract rate for the shipment. And that way I can use, you know, take a look at that before maybe my front office person goes in and updates these and take a look and say, oh, you know, it's going to charge us 98. Uh, we're charging them 88. Hmm, that, they received a discount they shouldn't have. Um, they should charge $100. So we can always override that freight amount field. A couple of the features that are included with Starship. Uh, first one is our eNotify program. So with eNotify, you can create a unlimited email templates. I'm just going to jump in our email viewer here. Go to pending. And so here's the quick template I created. And that could be sent out for this shipment. A nice thing with these, you know, if you're using FedEx or UPS, uh, the carrier provided emails, they're, they're kind of branded and labeled UPS FedEx. Uh, and these, you can put your company logo on them, build your brand awareness. Uh, easy to design. You can pull in stage fields, um, you know, PO number, sales order number, let the customer know how it's being shipped. Package breakdown, again, we can show them light and detail. Tracking numbers hyperlinked, so these can help reduce those inbound calls of customers just calling up looking for their shipment. Um, on each template, you can also assign emailing rules. So if you wanted to do a template with a promo code, uh, you can hyperlink the code, get the customer right back to your website. Uh, but you can also assign a rule. So maybe if you, say, had gold customer set up inside of Sage, this you can set it so this template would only go to those gold customers. And then last, included with Starship here is our dashboard. Dashboard is a reporting tool. Um, so right now I just have some performance indicators turned on here. Um, top chart of five, five customers, uh, shipment by carrier if I want to track that, by status I can see what's been delivered, posted, processed. Uh, shipment by user, so each of your shippers can have their own login credentials to get into Starship. You can also assign additional security roles to them. So it's a nice way to track, see who shipped what. We also have some canned reports, uh, too, that I'd like to mention is one, the late delivery report. This actually will go out, compare guaranteed delivery dates to the actual delivery date, going to notify you of any shipment that wasn't delivered on time. So you can contact your carrier and uh, try to get a refund. And then we also do have a CAN charge comparison report. So it kind of showed you how you can do this with user-defined fields inside of Sage. But as you can see, we do have that inside of, inside of this dashboard module. Uh, so this is going to show you all your shipment, show you the applied. Again, that's what you charge the customer for the shipment compare it to what the carrier is going to charge you. And the third column is the plus or minus. Nice report you can quickly run. That way you can make sure you're at least you know, not losing money or breaking even on your shipments. All right. uh, that's really Starship, a quick overview. So with that, I'm going to hand this back over to Patty 
uh, so she can show you how you can capture funds. Thank you, Matt. Great presentation so far. Ladies and gentlemen, so now that we have Inventory Advisor, we can ensure that we have accurate inventory information and so much more. Um, and then with ScanForce's help, we can automate the entire warehousing fit, pack, and ship process. And then you've noticed that with um, Starship, you not only have the easy shipping, but you have the rate shop and so much more functionality as Matt was presenting. And now we leave with credit card processing. How exactly can you benefit from it? Ladies and gentlemen, you have to be curious. Doesn't anybody want to know if there is a way for you to save money by simply switching from one processor to another? And what additional functionality are you missing out on if you don't look for another processor? So let me just explain. We're very excited to introduce two things. Level three processing, which will guarantee to lower your rate in half and sometimes more whenever you process a business-to-business -business transaction or a business-to-government transaction within the continental U.S. And also, one of our newest additions to the functionality with Sage 100 is click to pay It makes it so easy. You have a 24-7 collection agent that is not charging you a salary. And how does it work? You basically process the same that you always do, create your invoices through paperless office, the customer will receive the invoice with the pay now button, and they will submit their own payments. And I'll walk you through the quick process. I just wanted to show you how easy it is to set it up. We actually enable click to pay for you. Click to pay is included to any of our merchants at no charge so long as you're processing with American Payment Solutions. We also offer ACH functionality. So you have all of the flexibility that you're already accustomed to with any other processor, plus more. Now, click to pay may not be for all of your customers, so you decide who you would like to opt in or out of click to pay, and the same applies for ACH and credit card processing. Now, what I was doing while, while the other presenters were providing their side of the presentation, I actually created some invoices so that I can show you how easy it is to send the invoice and then get paid. So here's an invoice that was created with a pay here button. Now, on the vendor side of things, for example, you're sending the invoices to your customers. You have the email addresses on file, so you can go ahead and send them. And I had several invoices sent. Let's take a look at it from the customer's perspective. So you're sending the invoices, your customer is receiving them, and they're not able to click on the body of the invoice, and just as I promised, guess what they could do? They can actually submit their own payment. Now, once they submit the payment, it is very, very simple. The payment will actually flow right back into account receivable cash receipts for you, and you'll be able to keep track of exactly how much each one of your customers is paying. Notice how simple the screen looks for your customer. It will indicate the exact invoice number, the amount, we go down to the line level detail. Now, it's very important to mention the line level detail because this is exactly what we use to submit the different data fields that these in MasterCard require in order for us to ensure that you get the level three rate. These are all of the data fields that you see on the screen. And just so you can get an idea of the average savings, take a look at this statement, or I'm sorry, this analysis. We were able to save, and this is a true merchant, an average of $17,000 a year simply by processing through level three. Now, it's not just the time savings with click to pay because now they're getting paid instantly, but it's also a value in which they can save money by not having to take any extra steps. You can process transactions as you are accustomed to within Sage 100. We really don't change anything. The workflow process remains the same. You can still um, process transactions right within the sales order screen, accept payments against invoices. It's entirely up to you. If you do decide to use click to pay it's very simple. Once the, that payment is submitted, notice how we, have, we added the ATS click to pay button to your actual cash receipts deposit screen. So you're actually able to simply click on the click to pay button and see exactly how much was paid in this particular scenario, and then continue with your standard end-of-day process and continue to updating. That is all you would have to do. Now, it can't get any easier than that. Remember, um, instead of having to show you 
all of the different ways that you can process transactions, I do want to just reiterate, the functionality in Sage remains identical to what you would be accustomed to if you're already processing with Sage. The differences, and I would say the, be the best, the largest benefits would be that you're actually able to process through level three processing and yes, save up to 43% on your current credit card processing rates. And you can also take advantage of ACH and click to pay functionality at absolutely no additional charge. Ladies and gentlemen, if anybody's curious, and if you haven't been paying attention to this so far, look, look away from anything else that you're doing and listen to this one part of the presentation from me. We will provide you with a free audit of your current rates and fees, no strings attached. The worst case scenario is that you're gonna find out exactly where you can save money and go back to your processor and ask them to do this for you. Best case scenario is you will fall in love with the functionality that we're offering, want to take advantage of click to pay and switch to American Payment Solutions where we guarantee our rates in writing. And as a side note, if anybody likes the solutions that are being offered today, which would be Russ's solution, the inventory advisor, Steve Showalter, the scan for, Caroline and Matt with Starship, let me know and I guarantee I can find a way for you to offset the cost of these solutions by simply analyzing your statement. With that, I'd like to open it up for questions. If anybody has any questions, go ahead and use your chat box and we'll, we'll be happy to answer them. I'm also going to bring up everybody's contact information on the screen. As you can see, we have uh, contacts for each and every company that presented today, and we will definitely be happy to answer any questions.